Hi guys. Welcome to Welcome to Sundays in the studio with Sandy. Hard to get all those S's out of my mouth. Um, hope you guys are having a great day so far. I'm so excited to share with you guys my springtime wreath and appreciate so many of you that got the e-packet and that are here to paint with me or watch and paint later. Um, welcome, welcome. This is going to be a regular, so um, I hope you'll join me on Sundays to relax and paint and listen and hopefully be inspired. Um, but I want to remind you guys that the e-packet for this project is available on my website, sandymcteardesigns.com. And um, if you haven't gotten it yet and you want to paint along, the line drawings in there, a worksheet for the hydrangeas and leaves, step-by-step uh, -step instructions, and supply list, and everything else that you'll need so that you can paint it. So let's start painting. You guys ready? So again, in the e-packet, I painted this with the media line, my favorite go-to paints. They're a little difficult to get a hold of. So I'm going to share with you on this project both Americana acrylics and then also the fluid acrylics. All right. So let's get to our background first because there's so much going on and it's really set off by this incredible, amazing background. And it's a background that I've seen done um, by Chris Hoy, again at Cover Distributing, Tracy Moreau does it, just this aged wood look. Um, and I, I've done it on several projects throughout the years and it really has kind of seemed to take off and be very popular. So I turned it because I don't know if you can see my brush strokes that I applied the black, my brush strokes go this way. So I do wanna make sure that my white goes the same direction. Alrighty, so let me explain to you first before I painted my piece, I sealed it with multi-purpose sealer. This is a pretty thin board. So I don't want it to warp or anything and I don't want the grain of this to come up. So multi-purpose sealer is a great thing to put on, brush it on, let it completely dry and then start painting on it. It just preps your piece for amazing results. So let's get some white paint. And again, I'm just using the DecoArt Americana Snow Titanium White with an old label. I'm running out of white, which is not a great color to run out of. All right, then I'm gonna get my, <laughs> I'm gonna call it what it is, which is the one inch encaustic brush. So it's just an oval wash brush. Get that nice and wet, tap it off, and then I'm gonna come over here and just run that right through the paint to get it nice and inky. So get that nice and inky. And then I'm just going to see how the handle of the brush is like almost parallel. I want to pull that almost parallel to the surface and try and go as straight across as possible. Let's pick up a little more. Need a little more water. Work that into the paint before you come to the piece. Again, parallel handle. Now you'll, you'll start to notice, look how solid this is compared to where I'm leaving off. So what I'll do is flip my piece around and just pull a couple of strokes this direction. Not all the way down, but just to kind of cover up where I you know, left off with that brush. All right, and that striation, that's what you're going for, those black lines to show through. I also love doing this um, with a burnt umber or an asphaltum color background. You can also even do um, a green or an aqua to get that kind of aged green wood look. And I did that on a piece um, that was on the cover of the Decorative Painter magazine about, I think, two or three years ago, um, maybe two years ago. Um, anyway, and so putting that green behind it and then a little brown on it, oh, so pretty. So a lot of variations that you can do with that. So that's pretty much what we're going for. Now I went ahead and I prepped a piece just to be ahead of the game and have it dry. 
We'll move that one to the side. And let's just get a little baby wipe to clean this up. And <laughs> I should have put an affiliate code or something on Amazon, let me tell you guys, because I probably have sold them out of this mat. This is a silicone baking mat, 20 by, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, nice large silicone mat that I also use as my palette. Um, but it's just a great surface to work on. It keeps my piece from sliding around. So great little surface there. All right, so this is dry. And I'm going to rinse that brush out and get a little bit of um, asphaltum here. And you just need a little, like, you know, a dime size maybe. All right. So a little more water. Come over here. Oops, wipe too much water off. Pick up some more water and work that into that asphaltum. Now, on the finished one, notice how you can see some of that asphaltum coming here and there. I don't have it everywhere, but I just wanted to give that wood a little, um, that background a little bit more of a wood look. So come in again with my brush parallel. Put a little bit of it in here and there, but not everywhere. And the center is what we're gonna see more of. So that's why I've kind of done it more in the center, not really concerned about the edges as much. You could put a little maybe in the corners. You don't like it, wipe it with your finger. All right, we'll leave it at that. And hit it with a little bit of a heat tool. My go-to heat tool. Let's see if I can get that light off there. It's a Ranger heated, it's very quiet. And I already have the pattern on the other side of this, but I do want to share something with you guys about patterns, um, especially when it comes to my hydrangeas and how they evolve and grow <laughs> as I paint them. And so a little tip on the pattern I'll share with you. All right, so that's nice and dry. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, so on the, um, in the e-packet, um, if you got that, you have the line drawing, and it comes oftentimes with a border around, if you can print it without a border, um, but oftentimes on printers, it comes with a border. So I just cut that away, line up my line drawing, this is exactly from my original, and then um, lay some transfer paper down, you can also print it out on vellum, which I also have as my original, and go over your vellum. That allows you to line up that line drawing um, if you need to add other elements. But for the sake of just showing you guys how I did this one, and you'll notice on the original I have like bottom left corner because I went to repaint this and I had it flipped around. I forgot that was the bottom. So always a good idea to look and see if there's anything like that in the corner and then line it up and you always wanna tape it. You wanna tape it with uh, blue tape or painter's tape so that all you have to do is lift it up and it's not gonna move for you. But for the sake of showing you how I go around these on my hydrangeas is I go inside the line. If you come right to this outside line, your hydrangea is already gonna be the size that my finished one is. And as we paint these today, I'll share with you and show you how my hydrangeas grow. And if I already had this outside line there, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. Not much, I mean, your hydrangeas might get a little bit large, but that's okay. So I just go on the inside of that line. Now, do you see how I just scribbled that? The line drawing is a guideline. Let it guide you to put the pattern on, but if you wanna put an extra leaf somewhere, by all means, put an extra leaf somewhere. If you don't like where that leaf is, leave the leaf off. I am um, probably the world's worst pattern transfer because I don't use patterns. I just start sketching with my paintbrush. So even when I transfer patterns on, it's just a basic little sketch. Don't sit and have to go, every single line, unless it's a very intricate detailed piece that you, 
you know, want it very detailed. Um, but it's the shape of, the hint of, the outline of that image, okay? So, let's move that out of the way. Because on the other side, I already have my piece base coated in pretty much. So, what I've done for my leaves is a mixture of plantation pine and lamp black. If you're using the media paints, it is um, sap green and Payne's gray. I had it on the other side of the table. So if you're using the media paints, that's what I base coated the leaves in. Probably will take two coats because these are transparent. For my flowers, I didn't wash out my brush or anything. I just started base coating in the um, hydrangeas and I left one undone so I can share with you. Um, it is dioxine purple and ultramarine blue and Americana. If you don't have these colors, if you have a different color blue, a primary blue, that'll work. I just love the way that these mix and how they look different when they're together um, with a little bit of white and then how they are separate with a little bit of white. I think it just adds such a beautiful look to those purple hydrangeas. Now these are very loosey-goosey. I'm gonna go step-by-step step with you guys on how I did these, but there's not a lot to them. And the faster you paint them, I promise you, the better they're gonna look. Now if you're using the media paints, Doxine Purple and Cobalt Blue Hue, you can also use Thalo Blue, that looks really pretty. But again, just base coating in those elements. And I left the daisies off because as I was designing this piece, they came last. And so oftentimes the daisies are over the leaves, as you can see in the finished picture. So I just left those off for now till we finish the leaves. We'll come back and do the daisies. So let's get some Doxine Purple out. And I am going to go ahead and use this so I don't get my surface into my piece. A little bit of Doxine Purple. And I've tried to get Tracy's Renee to come down here and, and work my, um, my technology stuff <laughs> and banter with me and answer questions. And so I don't have that. So right now y'all are just gonna have to um, put your questions in the comments and I definitely will go back and make sure that I answer them. But to not get distracted, I'm not looking at the comments right now. Um, I'm also going to get a little touch. I did. I got black out. A lot of black. And let's get that ultramarine blue. Because I do want to make a dark base for my flowers. So with a number 12 brush, just get it wet, dry it off. I'm going to load up just a touch of black on the brush. And the reason I'm doing that is because after I did my leaves, I came back in and base coated these, so I had black in my brush already. A Little bit of those two colors. Just mix it and make a nice, I'm just brush mixing. And then when I come here to do my hydrangea, I'm just going to slap the flat of that brush in a slip slap motion and fill that in. And the reason I'm doing that is because notice how the edges are very uneven. If I draw a circle, I will end up with a very defined line right there on my hydrangea edge. And so this also gets my hand in that motion of how I paint the petals. So it's a good idea just to kind of slip slap the flat of the brush, flipping on both sides. Push away anything back into the circle there, just like that, okay? So see how nice and dark and rich that purple is? I'm just gonna leave it. So when we're start starting to do the strokes, I'll share with you guys, but everything from the outside edge comes into the hydrangea. None of the strokes go out, because if they go out, you might get those frayed edges right there. So. I always go into the ball, into that hydrangea ball. Any pencil lines or transfer lines left over, you can always come back and get rid of those. All right, so let's leave our flowers for right now. 
and move on to the leaves. I'm gonna leave that so it can dry. And we're gonna get out, I'm gonna go ahead and use the media paint, but again, if you're using acrylic, plantation pine, or whatever green you have, I like my leaves to start out dark, and then I add the light. So plantation pine and lamp black, or sap green and paints gray. The other thing, I like to work wet on wet, so I'm only gonna do a leaf at a time. Green gold, or if you're using Americanas, a citron green, margarita, sour apple, anything that's a nice bright green. If you don't have a bright green, you can always take yellow and mix it with plantation pine, add a little bit of white, and you'll get a really pretty color. Okay. So you can see my colors there on my palette, sap green, paints gray, citron green, and white. I'm gonna take my brush and right between these two colors, just pull some of that paint away, mix it with the flat of my brush. I'm going for a dark green, almost like a black forest green, um, midnight green, just a really nice dark green color. And let's go ahead and do this leaf right here. So I'm just going to base that in with the flat of my brush. My leaves are very simple and not that difficult to paint at all if you, if you don't overthink it, okay? So I have my wet paint there. I wiped my brush off on a paper towel. I'm gonna come over and pick up a little um, citron green. Nope, that is green gold, hello. I'm gonna confuse y'all on colors and confuse myself. So a little bit of sap green, a little bit of green gold, mix that together, touch of white. Now this is key. You want to wipe off the excess paint. So I'm just skimming the surface of my paper towel. With the chisel edge of the brush on the edge of the leaf, I'm going to pull at an angle and I'm pulling towards the base of that leaf. So let's get that light out there. So can you see how I'm coming towards the middle but not all the way to the middle? When I'm pulling, as I'm lifting, I lift quickly instead of just stopping. Stopping's gonna give you a stop line, all right? So let's zoom in a little bit more on that leaf. There we go. So a little more light green color, swipe the paper towel. Now, if it helps you put that vein right down the center, just slide on the chisel edge to get that vein right down the center. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of the citron, sap, and white. Swipe it across my paper towel. Do the other side. And again, right from the edge of the leaf, pulling at an angle towards the base of that leaf. Now, I will come back at the end as I'm adjusting my lights and darks, which is always a great idea at the very end of your project to hold it up, put it back, look at it from a distance and see where you need to adjust those lights and darks. So I'll do my all my leaves the same exact way, come back and bump that color up just a little bit on the highlighted side of the leaf, which would be over here. So just a little bit more. Now, a tip if you go too far. So if you come all the way into the center with that color, the fix will be to take that dark color back out. So sap green and Payne's gray, start at the center and you're just gonna pull out at an angle and that will regain some of that dark color. Okay, so nothing real exact, just a small little touch of light color it's in the shape of the leaf. It's got the color of leaves. And I love doing my leaves this way, okay? So let's go ahead and do a couple of more. Payne's Gray, Sap Green. I just wiped off that light color because I don't want that in my brush at all when I'm doing my base dark color. Wipe off the brush, Sap Green, green gold, a little bit of white. 
swipe it across the paper towel and get that right on the edge. And I'm pulling at an angle. Just slide on the chisel edge for your stem. Okay, now these little leaves, same exact way. I'm gonna switch to a number eight flat brush though. So I'm gonna get that wet, dry it off. Some sap green and Payne's Gray. Base that in. Wipe off my brush. Some sap green, green gold, touch of white. Again, swipe it across the paper towel. Now, this is a little different than my big leaves. So I'm gonna start with the chisel edge at the tip of that leaf and I'm gonna pull back. Maybe once or twice, but that's all I do for those leaves. Now, if I end up with the harsh line like I have right there, I might come back and soften that just a little. And then again, slide on the chisel edge of the brush, the tippy tips of those bristles, to slide in that stem. So let's do another one. Payne's Gray Sap Green, wipe it off, Sap Green, Green Gold, a little bit of white. Swipe it across a paper towel, chisel edge, right on the tip of that leaf and pull it back. Now, you see I'm wiping off my brush because if I go with all that excess paint, it's just gonna make a big mess. And I'm letting those wet colors blend through the wet color. So light pressure, very light touch to pull that on. And then again, slide on the chisel edge for that uh, vein down the center. All right. So let's do a few more, especially where these daisies are, because of course I want my daisies to be on top. And so where these are on your pattern, again, if you got the pattern packet, they're a little tricky because I painted full leaves there to begin with. So this is what I often will do. If something's in the way, I go over it. So I'll do one like this to show you because I can always come back and paint that petal. But for right now, that is in the way. So I'm just gonna wipe it off, come back with my sap green, green gold, a little bit of white, and I'm just gonna pull some of that color down, okay? And I can still see my line drawing through it. If I can't, that's quite all right too. I can just improvise and make it there. Something like this, it's a little more buried, is I'm gonna base coat it in, and since I can't see the whole leaf, it's just gonna get the touch of color. So just a little bit of that light color. Oops, I wiped off too much. Okay, because what's gonna happen is it's going to look like all these leaves. So don't get hung up on, oh, I have to pull it from here and go towards, you know, no, you just have to add it where you can, or again, paint the whole leaf, take away some of the line drawing, come back and improvise and put it in, or you can lay your pattern back down. Just a few little strokes the hint of color, the impression of a leaf, nothing super exact. A little bit more of that light color right from the edge, just like that. Now my, um, my little sticks for my wreath, I used a little asphaltum. I had a little bit of the leaf color in my brush, so you might see it's a little bit darker, but that's pretty much what I did for them and left it. Um, I, they're not really that big of a part of this design, but I felt like it needed some filler to, you know, how is it attached? So again, the, the look of little twigs and stems. Let's go ahead and move down here where we have these little leaves. And what's funny, when I base coat my leaves, let's move up just a bit. I base coat from the base of the leaf to the tip. When I come back with my color, I go from the tip towards the base. And I do that because I want the tip to be brighter and the base to be darker. If I started here with that light color, all that at the, the base of the leaf would be super light. So I'm gonna pull that light color down 
try not to go over it too many times. If you do, you tend to lose the prettiness of that light color feathering through the dark. Okay, and I'll wisp that right down there. Okay, so a little bit more on the smaller leaves where we're gonna have our daisies. Wipe off, pick up a little bit of that light color. And I do wanna show you real quick, again, I'll do it on a piece of paper for you. Sometimes it's easier to see it away from all that color. Okay, so basic leaf, right? Slide on the chisel, pull in a stem. When I go to pull that lighter color on, watch, watch where I'm lifting my brush. So about right, uh, not just before halfway or just past halfway. So I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna feather it. Pull it and feather it. So I'm flicking the brush with some control. I don't wanna just flick it or I'll end up with something like that. But I am on the edge with the chisel edge on the edge of the brush and I'm flicking it and I'm following the shape of that leaf, okay? Here's a cool way to do them as well. This is a Trudy Beard trick that I learned years ago. You go down one side of the leaf with the light and then come back in the center and go out towards the edge on the other side of the leaf. And then again, you can pull that vein right down the center. Okay, just gives you a little bit of a different look. So I painted all these in dark already, but then stepped away. So again, wet on wet is my preferred method. Unless I'm gonna do a little dry brushing, pick up that light color, again, swipe it on. Pull in those veins. And when you pull that vein, the handle of your brush, you want it straight up into the sky. So when you pull it, think of it like you're ice skating. You're ice skating on those bristles. Now when you ice skate, you don't wanna lean forward, you don't wanna lean back. You don't like it, brush it with your finger. Um, you just wanna move at the same rate, okay? And that will keep it from getting too fat in the center of that leaf. A little bit more, again, sap green, green gold, little bit of white, swipe it across your paper towel. I'm not gonna do these other big leaves because again, I showed you how to do these two. They're exactly the same way because I am chomping at the bit to get to those hydrangeas. I don't know about y'all, but I am ready to share and show. I have always loved to paint hydrangeas, and it's funny that if I go to paint something, and I'll go ahead and tell y'all a secret, don't tell anyone, but these were originally gonna be pansies, and I did not like the way they looked. So if there's ever an element I'm painting in a design, and I don't like it, they become hydrangeas, because it's one of my favorite flowers to paint. I find it's one of the easiest, and it tends to cover up a bigger area than, let's say, pansies. So I can cover up anything that I had there before easily with a larger flower, okay? And again, just slide up on that chisel edge. Impression of that little stem. And I went out of the lines here just a little bit. That's quite all right. I can always come back with a little bit of white, a little bit of asphaltum, a little bit of black. Plus we're gonna add shadows. Okay, so I've got those leaves done. Let's move on to hydrangeas. And I am gonna go ahead and do all three of them with you guys. Um, again, the step-by-step -step instructions come with a little um, worksheet. So I put this one in a page protector and you can practice the strokes on the page protector and wipe it off. But that gives you um, kind of the look of that stroke a little bit better. But I figure by the, by the time we get to the third one, you'll kind of start seeing the hang of that flick of the brush, that not exact stroke, and how easy they really are to paint. So I'm gonna use the media paints, the Doxine Purple, 
cobalt blue hue. If you're using Americana, Doxine Purple, and whatever other blue, you can use Ultramarine Blue. I just love the vibrancy of the um, fluid acrylics. Same exact technique, just a different paint. These have a higher pigment load, and so they're going to be brighter. Um, and, and the only way I can explain it is like when you go to put a nice varnish, like a satin varnish on a piece, oftentimes that brings, well, not oftentimes, it always brings the color up. So your colors are going to be a little bit brighter. You almost automatically get them with the fluid acrylics. So I'm going to use my number 12. Am I going to use my number 12? I'm going to use my number 8 because I want to control. Let's move that one down and do that first. I want to control these petals. So I'm going to pick up a little bit. Let's get my palette over here so you can see that. Okay, and let's get a little more white. I'm gonna put a little white there and a little white there. So pick up both colors on the brush. Don't, don't mix it down to one color. And I'm going to re-wet. Do you see how I'm slip slapping this brush? I'm gonna do one here and then I'm gonna go to the white card and show you. Now, I also have a very loose grip on my brush. If you are holding your brush like this, first off, your fingers are going to hurt. So let go of that death grip and just let your brush move flat side to flat side. Wipe off the brush. Now, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this color, a little bit of white. Swipe it across a paper towel. One, two, three. Pick up a little more. One, two, three. Now, what's key is when I swipe the first stroke, the second stroke, and the third stroke, I haven't reloaded my brush, and notice how I'm skipping around. So if I stay in one place at the top all the way to the bottom, my strokes are going to look too uniformed, and I'm going to cover up all the dark in the background. So I want to swipe, swipe, swipe. See, they don't even touch. I like that you've got three strokes that come toward each other, but they are not, they're not touching. So a little bit more of that color, a little bit more white. Mix that in. One, two, three. Again, remember, outside in. Pick up a little bit more. Just very, very loose strokes. I'm using somewhat of the corner, which again, I'm going to show you on the white card in just a minute. But even if you just use the flat of the brush, a very short stroke, you'll still get a pretty petal when they all come together. Now, let me hold this up so you can see. I'm already digging, look at all those different colors. And that's because my base was wet. What I'm doing right now has a little bit of paint on it, so it's gonna slide on and pick up those colors. Now let's go to blue and white. And this blue has, it gives you a little bit of a periwinkle look. So now I'll kind of come back up in here and start overlapping. And I'm doing three strokes, but sometimes I might just do one. Might just need a stroke right there. So one, two, three. One, two, three. I'm trying just to skip around and not go over the same place too many times. Let me hold that up so the light, there we go. That's a little better, isn't it? So not so much of a glare. But look at the pockets of dark. That's what's going to give your hydrangea the look of a ball. And it's a fluffy ball of petals. Now, hydrangeas, the four petals for each little blossom that's on that ball of hydrangea, if I'm saying that correctly, um, I don't want to sit there and make four petals for each one. So I will make a couple. Let's get a little more blue in there that have four petals. And that will give the illusion that all of them have four petals. Okay, now look what I did right here. See how muddy that is? All you have to do is come back with your original colors. 
slide in, and take some of that space away. Okay. So a little more blue, a little more purple, a little white. And then I just start to try and look and see if there's anywhere that needs to be rounded out, fixed, coming from the outside edge. You want this to be very uneven. Nothing, nothing straight, which I see a straight line, so I'm going to show you how to fix it. But you want these petals to come out. So even on this leaf that, you know, if once it's painted, I'll come out so that, again, it gives the illusion that all those petals are just kind of flowy instead of very tight and manicured in that um, hydrangea. Now, right here, see this very straight line? And they all go the same direction. So the best way to fix that is go the opposite direction and just overlap to take away that straight line. And oftentimes I'll even change the color. So maybe a little different than how you've painted hydrangeas before. I'm not doing an exact precise stroke, but it really is just the swipe of the brush and once you practice that and play around with it, it gets so much easier when you just swoop, swoop, swoop. One, two, three. Now this lone guy out here needs a little, little petal. And then maybe a little one right there. Okay. Now what helps these come together even more is that center color. And I don't oft, I don't always um, dot the centers of my hydrangea, but I think when you do, if right now it's just looking a little, hmm, it will help bring all that together. So a little bit of that light color, and you just want to pick out petals that look like they're coming toward each other. Just kind of pick those out. Now all of a sudden, what look like, you know, four strokes that were nothing, I have a little blossom there. A little four petal or three petal. See how that just starts to bring them all together? Sometimes even in here, I'll do just a little tap, like maybe I can see the base of, you know, a petal back there. It's a little on the bright side, so I'll touch it with my finger and tone it down. So I'm just dot, 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 haven't reloaded my brush. I'm using this number two round, which I love because it holds so much paint. Just tiny little dots. Okay. Easy peasy, right? <laughs> so let's go to a little card here so I can show you on something white. And I'll slow it down, give you the... stroke and more of the details on pulling that in and coming together with a three or four petal stroke. So again, basing it in loose, swipe from the edge. And I got this question the other day on a Zoom call and I, um, a Zoom class, and I, I, I didn't think about it. And so um, was something that I was painting, but let me explain to you why I use a flat brush for my hydrangeas. Let me find a filbert. Hmm, that's the only one I have. Okay, so to me a filbert brush is too exact. It will give me the petal, and if you're comfortable with a filbert brush, you can knock yourself out and use a filbert brush. But to me, all the petals are gonna look like this. Now, I can manipulate it and turn it but I still feel like I get a very rounded tip. Whereas with a flat brush, depending on how I pull that stroke, I'm gonna sit on half of the brush and the corner. So I'll sit and pull, sit and pull. And what I love about this for a hydrangea is that oftentimes hydrangeas you see, depending on how that petal is laying, or depending on what kind of hydrangea it is, a pointed tip. So that's what I'm going for right here. That first stroke is going to be 
I usually do it at the wherever the top of my hydrangea is. And for me right now, this one's looking like it's going this direction. So I'll start up here and do three strokes. And again, it's half of the corner. That's my first stroke. Then I have to turn my brush, half the brush, half the brush, half the brush. Okay, now those are a little far apart. I like them a little bit closer, but they don't have to always touch. And then just start skipping around. So this is a matte board. It's gonna soak all that paint right out of my brush. And this is already bone dry. So I won't get any of the variation in color like I did on my wood piece where the color from the base was mixing in with my petals. So again, notice how I'm skipping around. That's gonna keep that dark color, that rich, nice base for you behind all the petals. So one, two, three. I say it in my head almost every time I paint them. So it's that first stroke. Think of it like a head and two arms. Now, I'm on the edge and I don't wanna pull a stroke out. You always wanna go in. Okay, so hopefully that will make a little more sense away from the call the color on our piece. But when you have a little bit of that blue, a little bit of that purple, a little bit of white, you, know, you just get a variation. And once you're all done, when you come back and we look at the, your hydrangeas, when you see four that might look too similar, like in color, you can put a little color at the base of these. Just because I painted this one doesn't mean that this is 100% done. I can always come back, do a little shading, add a little dark. You know, I lost a little bit of my dark down here. I can add that back in. Okay, it doesn't have to be done in one swoop, you know, or, you know, just a few strokes. So let's move on to, I'm gonna zoom out so we can get to these other hydrangeas. I'll lift that up for you, but even that right there, I'm digging. I mean, look at all those. You can see the blue, you can see the purple, you can see the dark. Oh, love painting them that loose and easy. So again, I'll wipe off my brush really well because I want to pick up Doxine Purple, um, Cobalt Blue Hue, and I'm going to go right over that leaf. Remember that leaf was kind of in the way before, so I just went ahead and painted it. And then you wanna put those petals over it. And I'm getting a little bit of texture. You'll get a little bit of texture with regular acrylics and the fluid acrylics, and I that's fine with me, I like texture. Okay, slip, slap, slip, slap, slip, slap. Super easy, wipe off my brush. Pick up a little purple, a little blue, pick up a little white. Mix it on the palette just a little bit. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, let me point this out too. If my first stroke, first stroke starts there, I wanna pull one from the left and one from the right. Maybe even from the bottom, okay? But what I don't wanna do is one, two, three. That makes it look like it's a cheer. You know, like you can see the head and both arms are up straight in the sky. That will give you a little bit of a um, very tight flower and it'll almost look like the petals are completely closed. So one, two, three. One, one, two, three. Skip around and it's picking up that background color which is altering the color in the petals. And again, I love it and that's my number one rule in painting is if you like it, leave it. If you don't, figure out a way to fix it. But even if it's not 100% like mine, I'm gonna show you a different way down here, again, with the flat stroke, so that you can see that it looks just as pretty. Again, try not to overdo it. And I'm just picking up color, little purple, little white, little blue, little white. Again, that blue is gonna look like a, a periwinkle, the Doxine Purple on its own is gonna give you more of a, um, I was trying to think of the color the other day and I couldn't remember, I think it's Violet Pansy. See, that's gonna give you that redder purple. 
And it's that variation that oh, just sings to me. So see how you get that redder purpley pink, the bluer pink, some that look like periwinkle, all those different petals on that flower. Okay, now let's get a little bit more of the blue. Pick up the purple, blue. Again, I have a generous amount on my number eight flat. Slip slap it. Again, this kind of gets your hand in that motion of painting those petals. If I could give any tip to help you on these, that's the number one, is to don't overthink it. Don't overthink it and don't overwork it. If you put too many petals, and I often do this when I paint my hydrangeas, I'll put too many petals in and then I have to put the dark over it again and then paint fewer petals. It's so much easier to do that um, than sitting there trying to go in between and fix with the, with the dark color. But try not to paint too many clusters. So I'm gonna show you guys the flat of the brush now. So if I use the flat of the brush, the flat of the brush, see how pretty those are? I'm just tap, tap, tap. Small, short, little stroke. Tap, tap, tap. I'm on the flat of the brush. Because I'm using a number eight, my stroke isn't gonna be that big. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Moving around, skipping and jumping, leaving those dark pockets of color. One, two, right over that leaf as if the leaf were already painted. Okay, look how quick and easy that was. Just with the flat of the brush, okay? Nothing difficult, nothing hard. It is flat, flat, flat. And look how pretty, you know, by the direction I'm pulling it, my petal then looks like maybe it's a little cupped because I'm using the flat brush. When you pull it from the side, when you get the corner look, not like that. And you get a little bit of that tip. Again, one reason I use the flat brush, among others. I just like the way it moves for me. Okay, so this one's needing a little bit more on the blue tone. Let's hold that up just a little bit. See, they're all kind of looking the same. So I'll skip around and add this color here and there, but not everywhere. I want my lightest, brightest to be kind of wherever my little highlighted area is, but not all exactly the same color. So come in and switch it up if you need a little purple, if you need a little blue. And on those, I do like to make it look like they've got four petals, okay? So you've got that brighter color coming up. Again, just a little blue or a little purple and white. <laughs> but look at my palette here. This is exactly what you're gonna do. Just play around with color. A little bit of this, a little bit of this, add some white and go. If you wanna add a little bit more of that redder purple, just the dog scene purple and white is gonna give you that. More of that periwinkle, the blue and white is going to give you that color. So you can kind of keep those separated if you want, but a lot of times this is what my palette will look like. And if I see all the different colors, I know, unless I've overworked it, that my hydrangeas are gonna have the colors that I want. Okay, just like that. And then again, I'll come in and add those little dots. So a little white, little purple, little blue. Just kind of dot, dot, dot. Pick out places, 
there. Try and get that glare off there for you. Pick out places that look like four petals come together. And if you're just joining, welcome. This will be on my Facebook page here and recorded, so you can come back and watch. It will also be on my YouTube channel. So if you guys would be so kind as to go on over to my YouTube channel and give that a subscribe, that would be, um, give that a subscribe. I was gonna say a thumbs up, but you don't do that on YouTube, do you? If you'll hit the subscribe button over on YouTube. <laughs> I will have some more there and most likely we'll be doing a couple of lives from there. So let's see. Now this, this helps you too when you start to dot these. Let's get rid of that. When I start to dot, look what I have right here. I've got a very large section that needs a petal. So I just come back in, a little bit of color, put a little petal right there, okay? So this is kind of that final little thing. I'll add these here and there, um, but it also can point out things that maybe need a little something like that little petal there. Let's pick out. And just kind of dot, 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 dot. And if you're on really light petals, um, you can come back with a little bit of dark first for your center with a little tap, couple taps of dark and then highlight it. See like that one's exactly the same. So I need a little bit more white to bring out those dots. It's very random. You get to decide which ones are four petal looking same thing, I need a little something right there. A little something there. So it kind of tells on you, but in a good way. Pick up a little color, what did I say, right here and right there. Okay, another thing is I don't really have a lot of um, very dark along the edge. So that doesn't mean I might not have a darker petal in some places, but our base color that we started with, if you see a big area where you have a lot of that base color, like I don't mind when it's this little, but if I have a bigger area, sometimes I'll just swipe a little petal over it. Okay, so you don't see that outline or ridge that we started with. So right there are our, th our three hydrangeas. Easy, right? I think. The more you paint them, the better they will look. The faster you paint them, I promise you, the better they will look. Now let's move on to our daisies. So let's zoom in here just a tad. And just like I am with my hydrangeas, I'm very loose with my daisies. So I'm going to rinse out that brush, get a little bit more white. And I'll just use some titanium white. Okay, let's rinse that brush out really well. Okay, so the daisies. Um, a lot of times I'll start out with the Payne's Gray and just paint in my daisies, but I already kind of have this on this wood background, and if some showed through, I was fine with that too. Um, the Payne's Gray just gives it a little bit more of a gray tone and the automatic shadow, um, but that's why I came in and put that blue and uh, purple at the base of these petals, so I just started with the white. But let me explain to you what I'm doing. My number eight brush, sitting on the corner of the brush and push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift towards the center. Now over here, I have to go at an angle because I want my brush to make those petals look like that flower is cupped. So you do a sideways stroke. Okay, let me see if I have a black side to this. Okay, so sit on the corner, push, pull, lift. Ooh, I have a little purple in there, that looks pretty. 
push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift. Now see that lift, as you lift, you're pulling. You're gonna get that drag and I love that. If you don't, you're just gonna get this, okay? So as you say push, you're sitting on the corner, as you're pulling, you're gradually lifting up on your pressure. And then I can come in here with little squatty strokes, again, to give that illusion that that daisy is cupped instead of all of them looking, you know, exactly like a clock with the petals um, straight out. So, move my palette here so I can turn that. And again, push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift, right over those leaves. Ooh, get a little too much purple in there. I wanna save that. Push, pull, lift. Now let me look at my original and see, yep, this one does go up, so I'm just gonna swoop on the corner, swoop on the corner. Now this one hangs down. And let's go ahead and finish this one right here. This one hangs down as well. But you're gonna sit on the corner and push up. Sit on the corner, push up, push up. Okay. Now see how I turn that around? Because it's easier for me to pull the stroke this way. So don't be afraid to turn your piece. I used to be a stickler, a stickler about not turning my piece. I felt like I could turn my wrist and maneuver my wrist, but I mean, that's just too much pressure. If you need to turn your piece, turn your piece. A couple little strokes. Now when you turn that over, oops, let's finish that one off right there. That flower's looking down, right? That one's looking up. So again, following the direction of those petals, and I always, pretty much always, start with that petal in the center, and then work my way around. It just helps me evenly space those petals and give them the direction and shape that I um, am going for. And again, I love to use the flat brush because every now and then if I get a little bit of a point, I'm happy with that. They don't all look exactly the same shape as that filbert brush. That's just a personal choice. And if you've taken a class from me, um, oftentimes I will say my least favorite brush in the universe is a filbert brush. Let's get over here. This one has just tiny squatty little petals. I'm trying not to get into my palette here. Now, notice how my brush is starting to get a little fat. I will wipe that off because I'm sitting on the corner of it. What it's doing is it's pushing that paint into the middle of that brush and I'm starting to get fatter petals. So if that happens, just wipe off your brush, reload there, see, perfectly. Go right back to the size that you want. The other thing is pressure. Push, pull, lift, push, pull, lift. These are short, squatty little daisies, nothing long. If they were longer, my pull would be longer. And I say that in my head every time I paint them. Push, pull, lift, push, push, pull, lift. All right, and a little squatty, little squatty. Right there, we got one more hanging out over here. Again, with that center stroke. And if I see a little bit of color through them, I'm fine with that. Um, I, they're, it's not too much, so I'm not gonna go over them a second time. But if you feel like you need to make yours a little bit more white, by all means, you can go over them a second time, okay? Except this one. Look how you can see all of that line drawing. That would bug me. So I am gonna go over that one. Okay, so those are daisies. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Right, so my centers are super easy. I'm gonna rinse this brush out. And I've used so far, what, two brushes, my fugly brush, my <laughs> one inch oval wash and caustic brush for the background. The flower centers, my daisy centers, a little bit of sap green, a little bit of Payne's gray. Sit on the corner, 
and mush it in. When you tap, I don't want to do something like, well, I don't want to do it on that side. Let's do it on the card. I don't want to do something like this because it gives you a very manic manicured edge. I want it to be messy. I want it to look fluffy um, and have a little bit of texture. So sap green paints gray. And let me hold that up so you can see. See that texture from the brush? That's what I'm going for. So a little bit of that color there. Try and avoid straight lines anywhere. Just kind of sit on that corner. And if you do, like I do sometimes on these back petals, if you get a little color on there, you can always come back and repaint them white. Okay, so sit on the corner and just kind of tap, 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 especially right around that top where it meets the base of those petals. You want this to, and those white, my white must be really thin because um, first off, it's old. Um, I'm running out of white paint, um, but I can see quite a bit of those lines. So again, when you're doing it, if you have that, you can just go over them a second time. Okay, just like that, tap, 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 tap. Oh, and I left one off, but I'm not gonna paint it. I'm just gonna leave it for right now. Okay, so let's wipe that off. And let's go to the angle brush. So with a 3 8 angle, little bit of moisture in my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of doxine purple on the toe. If you're not familiar with using an angle brush, it has a heel and a toe. The toe is the longer part, the heel is the shorter part. One of my favorite brushes to use. Just love it. And love how you can control where to put that paint. So a little purple, a little blue, tap it on my um, palette here. Just kind of work that in. Turn your brush over. And I typically don't do this with my brush because the paint will migrate over. And I want to control it. So control how you're loading that. You can even step out to the side, come back, push it a little bit in, and then right at the base of my petals here, I wanted to slide that color around. Oops, I took a little too much moisture out. Let's zoom in there for you. Little bit of color right at the base of those petals. Now, notice how I, I'm not pulling the stroke it's a small little shimmy. I'm laying that color in with a little bit of a zigzag because I want there to be some lines. I want it to be um, uneven. I don't want there to be a dome of purple and blue right above that flower center. And I'll show you a way to fix it if you go too high. Okay, but look how that just makes those daisies pop. I love the way that that just, mm, I just love the way it makes it glow and it ties it into the, um, into the hydrangeas. So I'm not gonna do all of them. I am gonna come over to the um, petals again and show you that you know if you get too far out on your purple, you can always come back in with a little bit of white and just Oop, too much paint. Repull your petals. And it will take some of that away, okay? If it takes it too much away, like I just did, you can come back in and add a little bit. Okay. Now, for the centers... Ooh, just dropped water on there. For the centers, I am going to pick up on my number eight brush. I'm going to get that nice and dry. I'm gonna pick up a little sap green, a little green gold, right on the corner. Tap that in, pick up some white, work that in. Makes a nice candy apple green color. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a tap on that center with the corner. And, and again, the reason I love using this little flat brush, the size eight, is I can control where that paint goes. Um, I used to use a, like a scruffy brush, but I didn't feel like I had the control to put the paint where I want it to go. 
Okay, and I do want there to be some texture in there. So I'll go ahead and put some at the base there. I'm gonna pick up just a touch of Payne's Gray right at the base of that petal. I mean, excuse me, of that center. I just got paint on the petal. Okay, and a little bit of Payne's Gray on the corner of the brush. I'll come in and just do kind of like a small little U. Wipe it off. Just kind of soften that out. But notice how that just gave that center, you know, a center. I'm gonna pick up, let's get some more white here. up that petal. Okay, this is another thing when I'm painting my daisies. So because these are hanging down, if I want these to be more, oop, that green in there. If I want those to stand out more and give my um, flower even more shape and make it look like these petals are closer to me, I would paint, let's go to this one, I would paint these brighter and whiter and these not as white. Okay, they'd have a little bit of gray to them, like they do. Paint these top ones. And then maybe just a little bit on the tips, but not all the way down. Okay, so doing that again helps with that cupped look for your flowers. Now, let's come into the hydrangea here, and I'm gonna show you, like I did on these, at the base of that petal is exactly what I did for the daisy. So these right here all look the same. So I'm gonna pick up again on my angle brush, a little purple, little blue, work that in. And I'll come right at the base there. Oops, too much paint on my brush and put that right at the base of these petals. And again, not pulling it. It's a little bit of a zigzag shimmy. A little shimmy with that brush. To put that at the base. Now look how much better that looks. Okay? It just gives it some more life, more color. And you don't you might not need this. Your petal color might be fine, but if you find that they all look the same, Come back in and add just a little bit at the base. Or you might feel like you need to add a little brightness to the tip, which you can do the same exact way, but use a little bit of white with that blue and purple. Okay. And then right in here, I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that dark color. Let's take away right in here. That petal got a little long. All those little fixes that help. And I'll come back in and paint just a little stroke right there. Okay. Now let's talk about shadows. Let's take a deep breath. <laughs> Are y'all still breathing? I um, have to remind myself sometimes to breathe and not hold my breath. So on here, I do have some uh, kind of some drop shadows here and there, not on everything, um, just in places. Let's go down here on the leaves. You can see that little drop shadow. I love this little corner right here with those very subtle soft leaves and you can see some drop shadow leaves right in there. And so I'm gonna do that again with the number eight flat brush. Get my brush wet. Let's get some Payne's Gray. And regardless of what, what kind of paint I'm painting with on a project, my favorite paints to float shadows with are the fluid acrylics because they're transparent. So to me, you know, you can use water with your Americanas, the fluid acrylics with some water, to me are just gonna give you a prettier shadow. So with these, I'm going to see if I wiped too much off. No, that's good. And come out, give it a little bit of a tip. 
So I have water in my brush. Well, for the camera, it's looking like it's a little too thin. So let me just add a little more color. Okay, see that little shadow right there? You can come right up underneath the petals. Again, that didn't show it very well on camera, did it? So let's do it a little bit darker. You can use an angle brush if you want to. I just like that sometimes this number eight is going to give me some points, some flatter areas. Come down and add another one right there. The trick with these is to not go over them too many times, okay? If you go over it too many times, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lift the color and it's going to make a harsh line for you. But I have water in my brush, a little bit of paint. You can float right up underneath it, you know, that traditional float, but I just love these kind of cast shadows to me, it adds so much dimension to the piece. It needs a little more down here where it's a little on the lighter side. Actually, right in here, look how dark it is right in here. So I have to pick up a little more paint to get that in there. But it helps with these, you know, kind of clusters to give them a little bit of shadow adds a softness, I think, to that piece. Notice how I'm touching it with my finger. If I don't like it or it's too dark, I touch it with my finger. No problem getting my fingers wet. In fact, I always say that if you don't have paint on your hand when you're done painting, you didn't have enough fun. It's supposed to be fun. I could go on and on and on. <laughs> it's hard not to with this. But too much and, and it kind of takes away that wow. Um, so again, I don't do it on all of them. I'll come back and add just some traditional shading underneath here and there. But I do love that shadowed look. Now in here, where these two hydrangeas touch, see how they kind of just morph right into each other? I'll come back in with a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of purple, tiny touch of that blue. The paint's gray is gonna make it darker, almost like our base color. I'm gonna get a touch of water on my brush and I can come in and at the base, right at this flower, at the base of this flower, this one's almost looking like it's on top. I am going to, where's that at? Right there on my palette. Um, I'm gonna paint some of these a little darker. Again, just a little shimmy, little shimmy float. Okay, that's now look how that just automatically separated that. And the other way is to make these petals a little bit brighter. So I can come back with a little blue, a little purple, a little white. Okay, now puts that flower on top of that flower. Okay, so let's move on to just the finishing little touches here. Again, in the e-packet, if you got that on my website, it has all the written instructions for all the elements, showed you how to do the hydrangeas, how to do the leaves, how to do the daisies, the daisy center, the drop shadows. Isn't that just awesome? It's so effective, so cool. So I am um, finishing touches. I like to add a little bit of a line to my leaves. I don't know. I just think it, it loosens them up even more. So sap green, little green gold, and white. And I'll just mix that together. I'm using my number two round or a liner brush. That's what you have. Just get a nice little inky puddle there. And then I'm going to pull so typically I'll pull from here. Oops, got water on there. That would not be good. And just very loosely give it a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of an outline. 
but not a straight outline. And I'll also come back in and bump up the color. I don't like it as bright at the base of the vein, so I'll oftentimes push up right there. Um, but depending on how the leaf is, sometimes I have to start at the tip. Okay, again, just adds a little, a little whimsical flair to it. This is decorative painting. It's supposed to be fun. Okay. Little wiggle. Just like that. Then splatter. I'm all about splatter. Love to finish my pieces with splatter. And the larger the brush, the larger the splatter. So I'm going to stick with my number eight. Get water in it. Pick up some white. Make it nice and inky. So look how inky that is. Nice and inky. In fact, I need a little bit more paint. And then using the handle of a brush with the handle of this brush. So this helps. If you have it on the ferrule, it's not going to do it as, as nicely. The handle of the brush to the middle of the brush. And wherever the head of the paintbrush is, that's where your splatter is going to go. Now, it will spread. But if I want to contain the splatter to this area, the head of the brush is going to be over that area. Okay? And then I'll move. And then I'll move. And then I'll move. Okay, so I kind of contained where it is. Now, if it's on something I don't want it on, I can wipe it off almost immediately. It will come off. If you wait, it's going to dry. And then I'll rinse out my brush, pick up some Payne's Gray. I like Payne's Gray. If um, Black sometimes can just be a little harsh, and the Payne's Gray, to me, gives me that nice, rich, dark color without it being too harsh. Um, soft Black is a good color to use as well. Um, but again, just a little bit of that paint here and there. And if you saw my last live it, with the um, journal page, I do this on my pieces like this as well. I like to come back with the paper towel, lay and touch. And then I'm going to flip it over, lay and touch. And what that will do is it gives your splatter a stained look instead of a very heavy splattered look. And I have to tell you guys, I learned that from Kelly Hornig. So look at the how pretty that almost little stain dots instead of it being really, really heavy and in your face. Okay. So last little bit is the border. And I wanted to give this, you know, on photo editing programs, how you can get that little vignette look where you either have a frosted edge or a dark edge. So I'm going to use the Payne's Gray and a baby wipe. Let me just zoom out here just a little so I get the entire board there. Okay. So with a baby wipe, I'm going to wrap my finger around the baby wipe and keep the rest in the palm of my hand. I'm going to pick up some Payne's Gray and I'm going to run that on my finger, back and forth. Now this is key. You want your palm on the inside of your piece. If you start at the edge, you're gonna get a very distinct harsh line. So go right around the edge, and I like to round the corners. And you don't want to go over this too many times. If you go over it too many times, meaning you sit there and go over that same side, it will start to lift on you and give you a really harsh look. So just keep moving. You can always come back and add more if you want to deepen that color. Um, but I do this on my journal pages. I do this on my projects, sometimes with white or off-white or asphaltum. Okay, just to give it a nice framed in look. Need a little more paint. Again, round those corners. And I do like to make it a little bit darker at the corners. So I will come back, 
when I'm done, look at it, add a little bit in these corners. All right, and you end up with your piece like this with our hydrangeas, our daisies, those tiny little, um, you know, fluid lines on the leaves, the drop shadows, some shading in our hydrangeas, that vignette around the edge. All right, and don't forget you can get um, brushes from Dynasty Brushes. Um, you can get from the Brush Guys. You can also find them um, on Marine Baker and also jillybean.net has them. And then the fluid acrylics. I know I get this question all the time. Again, they're difficult to find right now because of COVID. Um, so you can find some of those on Marine Baker's website. I found some on Amazon. You will be able to find the Americanas and some of the fluid acrylics still on DecoArt. Didn't know if you know, they have a store. You can go on to decoart.com and shop. And then also um, where I got the surface and where you can also find Americana and the fluid acrylics um, in some colors is cdwood.com. Okay, so I'm gonna come back up here next Sunday. My Facebook Live is gonna be at 4 p.m. and I will share information of what we're gonna do um, early in the week, I hope, um, and get that e-packet posted on the website. So I hope you guys had fun. Thank you so much for joining me and for painting this piece with me. Um, again, you can find the um, packet, the e-packet on my website. I email it to you right away just about after you order it. And if you have any questions at all, you can email and let me know. You guys have a fantastic, fabulous day. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Bye.